Right now, we are here to celebrate Little Women with a whole group of wonderful individuals, starting with casting director Francine Maisler. We also have stars of the movie, Florence Pugh, and Sir Ronan. And finally, writer-director Greta Gerwig. Welcome, welcome, and thank you all so much for your time today. Yet another congratulations on the movie and all the wonderful things that have been happening since and more to come. Greta, I wanted to start with you on this and specifically kind of recounting the pitch process because I know the first round of it for you was just to write the screenplay. So at what point were you confident that no, I'm not just writing it, I need to direct it as well? Well, actually, I, uh, so I, I love this book. I grew up with this book. It was my favorite book. Um, but then I hadn't read it in something like 15 years. And I read it when I was 30. And I was instantly like, I, I, I just could, I was so modern. It was so exciting. All of the themes seemed incredibly urgent. So I was like, I've, I've got to make this into a movie. I know exactly how I'd want to make it. I'd want to start when they were adults. I had a whole idea. And, and so I, t I t sort of talked my way into um, Amy Pascal and uh, office and talked to her and Robin Swigard and Denise DeNovi. And I was like, here's my idea. It's about authorship and ownership and women and art and money and I'm gonna tell it out of order and I'm gonna direct it for you. And they were like, who are you? <laughs> I had not made Lady Bird and I was not a person you'd, you'd hire to do anything. Um, but I was really just, I felt like I, I, ha I had to do it. So um, initially they hired me to write the script and then after I had directed Lady Bird and it came out, um, then they said, would you like to direct the movie? And I was like, uh, yes, time has finally caught up to what I wanted. I'm just curious because sometimes when you grow attached to a piece of material at a young age and then revisit it when you're older, you see new things or maybe gravitate, gravitate towards certain characters that you might not have before. So I don't know, if young you had written this screenplay compared to adult you, what might it have looked like then compared to now? Well, I mean, to be, it was, what I saw was entirely d different in the book when I was young. I mean, I think that was, that was part of what I was trying to capture with this adaptation was this, um, in a way, it was mirroring the way I was reading the book. I'm both, you know, th th these are these women looking back at their younger selves, and it was also me re-experiencing the book, but also thinking about myself as a young woman reading it. So it was kind of a, you know, a double experience, and I think the thing is, when you're young, you have absolutely no perspective on the thing you're going through. Um, and I, I feel like making it when I was when I was a grown up. Actually, I'm 36 years old, which is exactly the age Louise May Alcott was when the book was published. So I felt like that was a sign. Um, but it's a, it it creates this ache in the in the telling of it because it's gone. Sersha, I was wondering when this came into your sights here, because I do know that when you heard about it, you said, I'm, I'm playing Joe. Is that strictly based on knowing the Little Women's source material and having worked with Greta, or did you know her take on the story? I, I didn't know exactly what Greta was going to do with it, but I knew it was going to be smart and better than what anyone else would do with it. Um, so. Yeah, I, ju I just knew I, want, uh, I wanted us to keep working together. Um, and I had grown up with the book and I had grown up with other film adaptions of the book that I absolutely loved and kind of like what you were saying, I think depending on sort of where you're at in your life, you can really identify with each of the girls individually um, and you can kind of find something of yourself in, in each of them depending on sort of where you're at yourself. So I always love that about them. Um, but I did always gravitate back towards Jo. Um, and so when I heard that this is what she was going to do, I, I basically just told her that. You didn't hear 
any of that, did you? <laughs> it was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you actually hear any of it, or will I say it again? You didn't? Oh, shit. Okay. Um, Maybe we should play a game where Francine can sum up what you just said. Well, no, just, just basically that I, I had grown up with um, the books um, and had grown up with film adaptions of the book and could sort of find myself in each of the girls depending on which point I was at personally in my life. Um, but I did always gravitate back towards Joe. Um, so I think it was a combination of the, the affection that I had for the story and for the girls and also the knowledge that whatever Greta was going to do next, it was going to be smart and brilliant and different to what anyone else would do with Little Women. So... I just went up to her at a party that we were at or like an award show or something for Lady Bird and I just sort of like aggressively tapped her on the shoulder for ages until she turned around and um, I just said, listen, I know you're, you're going to do Little Women and um, I just want to let you know that I'm going to be playing Joe. Um, and she said she would think about it, which is not what I expected her to say, but anyway, um, yeah, and so that's kind of how it happened. Yeah. I'm going to just walk around Hollywood aggressively tapping people uh, yeah, on the shoulder. It works and sometimes. Seeing what happens. <laughs> Uh, Florence, I do want to know what your first impression was when you were approached to play Amy and you hadn't read the full script because I don't think many folks out there, or, or not many that I've spoken to at least, say Amy was my favorite character from the source material, but what you two have done with this role in this film is nothing short of exceptional. So I'm curious, what was your first impression when that was the March sister that you were going for? I mean, I mean, everything about Amy is totally delicious. Um, and even in the book, I, I've always appreciated naughty characters. And what Greta gave to Amy in this version was just so exciting. And if you, I think something that I've always uh, thought quite amazing about this particular script is take away the book and take away this being something that everybody's grown up with. In terms of the characters and, and what we as actors get to do going from young to old is so exciting. And then also, um, for me, I got to help persuade everybody that Amy is actually pretty amazing and she's um, this incredibly intelligent girl who didn't just burn the book and end up with the guy. And that's um, scary, because everybody hates her already. Uh, but so thrilling because um, we had an opportunity to give her something more um, and that was, I mean, bliss. What were the pros and cons of going straight from Midsommar <laughs> to shooting Little Women? Well, I went from a nightmare to, <laughs> to like very uh, quaint white heaven. Like there was, su there was snow when I arrived. It was um, completely polar opposite. Uh, the pros and cons, midsummer, I went through emotional distress every single day of the shoot, um, which was great. And then um, I, I came and I, I've said this over and over again, and I think Amy was my total therapy that I needed um, during the shoot. They were completely opposite, but I, I got to be a child. Um, and there is nothing more freeing and, and wonderful than being her in her young element. Um, and actually, all of the scenes when we were kids, there was this certain energy of just letting go, and you never get to let go, really. And um, I think that was the set that Greta gave us and, and the, the, the actors that we were with. It was uh, like we were going back in time every single day. Um, so, yeah, I, I really did have all the therapy that I needed on, on Little Women. <laughs> what is the barometer for both of you as far as playing these characters at an older age, but also so, so young, in particular, Amy? How do you make sure that when you're doing something like that, it's not necessarily overly childish, but feels true to the adult version of the character? I think, uh, sorry, before you... Uh, say, I, the scariest thing was that I knew I was a 23-year-old pretending to be a 13-year-old <laughs> and um, knowing that I, I, I had a, a woman's body. So for me, the main, the, the moment when I could relax was when I actually saw how young we could make me and with the fringe and with being bound and wearing all the child corsets and everything that would really shrink me into a child. But before that, it was quite scary. You, you don't know how big or how little you're being and then, of course, you just completely trust your director to tell you otherwise. Nailed it. Uh, 
Francine, we would be here all day if I listed off the incredible list of credits that you've worked on. You've worked with some incredible filmmakers over the years too. I'm curious, just for your work, is there any constant as far as a director, a quality that a director has to have that makes you the most effective at your job as far as being a collaborator and forming an ensemble goes? Oh, thank you for the compliment first. Of course. Um, you know, I sit here with Greta and I just keep remembering back to, okay, I'm gonna be honest. When Greta first called me about Little Women, I just was, it was like, it was a dream to work with her. She didn't know that. But I wasn't a big Little Women fan, <laughs> which I never told her. Um, and what's, uh, it wasn't that I wasn't a fan of the book, but I was much more of a young SNL watcher and th those kind of things. <laughs> That's the, what I grew up with, a family. Um, but I had seen the movies, and then I did think, why are we making this again? And then, and that's the truth, and, and a lot of people maybe, and, and then she told me her vision, and I am, I'm just gonna take the opportunity to say, I am just in awe of the work that she did, because I could watch this movie over and over again, and I'm so glad that young women and people are introduced to it in this way because of her. I mean, so I just, um, so is there one thing, oh, I work with so many different, they're so different, I, you know, um, I can tell you about Greta, who's here, you know, who, who makes the environment for actors to come in an audition so warm and so welcoming, which is so important for actors to do well. Um, she even, on um, um, one of the auditions, enlisted some of her friends to come in and read with the actress so that it would feel not just, you know, this office room in some building so that the actress could really soar. And um, all directors don't do that. They don't. A lot of directors now, to be honest with you, we tape a lot of auditions. Uh, they're not in the room. Maybe it, uh, a lot of my directors are European, so they're not here, um, but it's... But, but she's right there for all the actors and knows what she wants. And um, is this answering? Absolutely. Um, it's just, just I, I, you know, I, I knew Greta as an actress and she's so funny and, and physical comedy. And then one time we went out to dinner. I know, sorry. No, no, it's no, my it's, no, it's nice. <laughs> um, and then one night we went out to dinner with um, her partner and I was like, holy shit, this woman is smart. This isn't just this slapstick comedy funny woman and um, so well read and, and then I was like, okay, you know, you know, I kind of hang on to the director's, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, go along for the ride and help them how I can. Not just the directors, but also I notice you have a lot of credits on your resume that include Timothy Chalamet. Oh. Is, is he someone that you always kind of have on the top of your mind now? Like many others out well, there. Well, I think everybody has Timothy <laughs> on <laughs> their mind right now. Um, Timothy, you know, came in for Beautiful Boy. And uh, before that, I think it was... Um, uh, oh, gosh, I forget that uh, there was one, but... She had put him in, in um, Lady Bird, and so um, he's just, you know, he, and his presence in this is just, uh, he, the way he moves his body mm. is just amazing to me, and you can't take your eyes off of him. Mm. And, and, so, and one so thing true. I want to say about um, Florence, uh, one thing about, uh, she had to choose, we thought, between Midsummer and this movie, and, the, and Greta wouldn't give up. Mm -hmm. um, because she had kind of committed to Midsummer before Little Women, or they were in, um, that was in play. And, um, and Greta was like, this is, she's it, that's it. And she would not give up, and the producer made it happen mm -hmm. with the schedules. And I think that's an important part of a successful director. They know what they want, and they go after it. Very glad to hear you, uh, you stuck to your guns on that one. Um, is there anything else in particular that you really had to fight for just to make this movie your way? Yeah, like every single thing that is in the movie represents an argument <laughs> that I had. Even the movie, I mean, it's true, even the movie existing. I mean, I knew when I reread the book at 30 and what I wanted to do with it, um, just, 
it, you know, to me, it's, it's one of our great American uh, novels. And, you know, the truth is, we never get tired of listening to Hamlet not know what he's going to do because it tells us something about what it means to be human. And I equally feel that the March sisters, and Joe March in particular, continues to tell me something about what it means to tell your story. And I knew that as soon as I had, as soon as Sersha told me that she was going to be Joe, and then I told her I needed to wait a week because I had to maintain the illusion that I was in control. Um, <laughs> then it was like I instantly felt this, that, that I, want, I knew that I wanted to make it, I mean, to be to, totally honest, I knew I wanted it to be on a huge canvas. I knew I wanted it to feel epic. And to tell, you know, any studio I want to make, I know they've made it, I know it's 150 years old, I know it's about girls, and I know it's called Little Women, but I'm telling you, we gotta do it big. Um, that's a very confusing thing. I actually do think I said to Tom Rothman, I said, this is my Spider-Man. I, this is the radioactive spider that bit me. <laughs> and now I can write because Louisa May Alcott wrote. And he was like, I just heard Spider-Man. <laughs> um, but I, I did really like, I mean, to, to do, to sort of like spread out and, and, and I was so lucky this, you know, Francine and, and my entire creative team, York, who shot it, Jess Gontra, who did the sets, Jack Landrian, who did the costumes, these incredible actors, like Saoirse, who I've got, I mean, she's like my partner. She's my creative partner. And, and then, you know, working with Florence and Emma and Meryl and Bob and Chris, like, I mean, it was an insane thing that all these people came to be part of it, but, um, you know, every, I, I, I think any, any movie that exists represents someone, you know, willing it into existence. And, and um, the, the decisions that made it onto the screen. I mean, shooting on film, that was not something anybody was excited to do, um, <laughs> except for me. Um, and Yorick and everyone who was making the movie. You know, I mean, it was, it was, it was one thing after another, but then... Um, I just think it was like collectively as a creative team, as a group of actors, I think we all knew what this thing was before it existed. And it was just that shared passion that drove us through because, um, I mean, I knew like when I was in London with Sergio when we were talking about it and I, I just started to feel it bubble under and I was like, there's a thing, we can get to it, I know. Um, and everybody keeps saying, well, well, I don't know, is it there? I'm like, it's, I, it's yes! Um, anyway, that's it. <laughs> Bringing up the 35, we got to watch the movie today projected Did in you? 35 oh, millimeter, good. which is... Oh, beautiful. It, it really was a beautiful oh. and special experience. Oh, that's so wonderful. I, I just, um, I, I was I actually, I didn't get to go into the projection booth here, but I went into the projection booth at the Egyptian and it looked gorgeous and it's very moving to me that people are watching it on film. It's, you know, it's film. I've always, that's, you know, it's movies. I don't blame you. There are a whole bunch of incredible qualities in this movie, but one of my favorite, especially as someone who has a sister that I'm very close to, is the group chemistry between the four of you. I know you're actors and it's your job, but what do you have to do to have so much just, I don't know, in infectious real chemistry where, you know, I meet you on screen in an instant and I can already feel the history of that family. What do you do to prep to make sure on day one of filming that's there? Honestly, I think one of the things that helped the most, I mean, Flo was in her flower dress too in Midsummer, so she wasn't about, but... Um, which, which actually kind of worked, I think, because we really missed her, but Amy is sort of this separate entity anyway. Um, so it kind of worked out really well, and it was really amazing when she came in on day one that she was just ready to go. But I know for the, the three of us, and Laura and, and Timothy as well, 
um, we had people come in to teach us about etiquette and we worked a lot with Jacqueline Duran on the costumes. But honestly, I think more than anything, I mean, the thing that always helps me the most is just the dialogue. And the text in this was so precise. It had to be so precise. It was written in a very precise way. So we knew exactly when we needed to come in. There was the little dashes like you get in the plays. Um, so it was very musical and we all really needed to rely on one another. Sometimes when you're doing a scene, and especially if it's between like a bunch of people, you just listen for your sort of cue word, and you're you're like, okay, I come in once everyone stopped talking, you know. Um, whereas with this, we all had to be so in tune with one another, and I think that really helped us to to bond. We really had to kind of take care of one another. And then as well, like we've been saying too, that I think we all have like such a similar sense of humor, which really helped. So like when we were off set, we were just all kind of messing about the whole time and doing funny voices and ripping the piss out of each other. And then Greta would allow that. This is another great thing that great directors have is that they don't stop whatever's happening off set. They allow that energy and that dynamic to sort of keep growing and becoming something real and then she just allowed that to like tumble into the scene so I'm already getting the rack up sign and it's crushing me because I have so many questions but I have gotten into the habit of ending on this one which feels important because I know it was important to you to have the credits play through to the end yes. if you had to name an unsung hero of little women who would you choose we know all of you but there are so many people that work on these movies just someone that I don't know, put an extra you know, amount of effort into a day that made your day easier. I'm gonna say this because, I mean, I don't know how many people here do. I, I mean, I'm, at, I'm, I'm so emotional this week. I might start crying. My first AD, Jonas Baccarotelli, uh, worked with me on Lady Bird. He worked with me on this movie. He is, um, he's like my other brain um, in, 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 in filmmaking. And I mean, it's funny because I've, I'm like, as a collaborator, I'm so obviously close to Sersha and that's like one, it's like one leg of a stool in a way, <laughs> the three of us, but yeah, Jonas. And I feel like first ADs never get enough credit for how um, creative they are because I think people think it's, um, I don't know, it's like, it, it's, it takes these very particular talents of scheduling and kind of keeping the day going, but like Jonas would do this thing, he would always try, as much as we had to get through so many scenes, like four different plots, two timelines, four seasons over 10 years, and he would always try to think about structuring the day emotionally, think about structuring the week emotionally, emotionally, knowing that we had to skip around in the timeline a lot, but being very sensitive to where the actors were. I mean, he really is my uh, like right hand man when I'm making um, movies. And I just, um, I don't know, first ADs, just uh, you could give them all the gold. They should have their own award um, show. Award show they should. But they wouldn't show up because they'd be working too fucking hard. They'd show up and they'd be like, I could organize this so much better. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you people? Um, no, but they're just truly, truly, Jonas was like, ugh. And, and yeah, and he's working right now, of course. And, you know, um, anyway, love him. Any other names you guys want to throw in before we have to say goodbye? The entire costume department were like, uh, I mean, we'd, we'd talk to them about everything whilst we were getting changed every single morning. They were kind of the, the heartbeat and the carers of the entire set. So I will say every single person in the costume department were very big sisters to us all. Yeah, I'd say um, Sinead O'Sullivan, who was the um, supervisor, um, who's Irish, um, of She's incredible and she works with Jacqueline on a lot of stuff and she's starting to do her own stuff now as well. And also like definitely for actors, like the hair and makeup team, you go into that truck at 5 a.m. every morning. They're the last people, 3 a.m. Actually, yeah, we were in even earlier than that. Um, and they're the last people that you see at night. When you're emotional, you go in there. When you're happy, you go in there. You have a drink at the end of the week with them. We had um, Frida, our head of department in hair, had a little dog called Freya, who was like literally our therapy dog, wasn't she? And whenever any of us were stressed, it's like she would know and she would just like ask to be put on your lap. Um, so 
the girls are always incredible. Got it. We, now that we're doing, like, just, I just have to say one more person, just because if he's not here, it is Jess, Jess Goncher, who's the production designer. Holy fucking shit. That man pulled a rabbit out of his hat every day. I have no goddamn idea how he did it. And he never once said to me, we had so many sets. We had so many locations. It was so crazy. And anytime I was like, at the end, I was, I mean, we, it was, you know, it was like, Jess, can you make a train station? And he just said, got it. And I was like, where is he going? And he's just walking off into a field, I think, to make a train station. I don't know. He's a genius. I mean, he's, I mean, he's worked with the Coen brothers. He's worked with Bennett Miller. I mean, he's, he, he is extraordinary and works with extraordinary people, but he's also, I, I don't know. I don't know how, he, I don't know how any of these department heads did it. We, I can't talk about, the people who made the movie with it, it's like, you, you're, it's like I'm talking about my brothers and my sisters. I like love them and I, I can't believe how much they gave to this movie. You could feel it when you watch the movie too. I'm gonna kindly ask everybody to stay in their seats as we give these four wonderful women a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Huge congratulations on the movie. Thank you guys so much for being here today. We'll see you soon for more Collider FYC Arclight screenings. <laughs>